tonight. It's always such a privilege to come in and cook in this awesome, beautiful kitchen and cancer support and, and share some recipes with you. But before I get started, I just want to say a couple of things that I've been thinking about. You know, I'm always thinking about things. This particular class, we're going to talk about breakfast. But I want to really encourage people, now is the time to get your herbs out. Get them in pots. I did go out and I was planting everything and I noticed my mint jumped out of my pots into my flower garden is coming up everywhere. So I had to reach in there and start yanking up mint, which hurt my feelings because I love mint, but it will take over your world. So if you're going to do some mint, be sure and put it in a pot and you know, you may have to do what I did and that is go in and pull some of it out. Garlic can be that way too. It can take over. But if you can get some pots out, I just harvested my first lettuce and it was so exciting. A tender, beautiful, gentle lettuce that you can, you know, have at the first of the season was just delicious. Spinach is up about this high, maybe even about that high. I know we're going to have some cold weather and that's kind of a pain in the neck. When it gets cold like that, I just buy those dollar, um, at the dollar store, those big, biggest tablecloths and I'll throw those over there. And because they're only a dollar, they're pretty inexpensive. I can fold them up and I can use them over and over for that. I even throw them over my flowers if I need to. And if not that, I use some old sheets and put those out. And then I can wash them and, you know, it doesn't hurt them. But it is the time, the time, the time. Get your stuff out there. Get it in the ground, especially those cold weather. You know, lettuce and spinach and those greens, they don't like hot weather. So you want to get them out now so they're coming off and they're they're nice and ready to go. Now, every year I try to start and go through breakfast, lunch, and dinner because we all have to eat those meals. And they're hard, it's hard. Breakfast is my hardest. I don't really like to eat when I first get up in the morning. That's not always my favorite thing. So I try to find things that are smoothie-like, shake-like, we're gonna do one of those. But I also want some other things that are a real part of the meal because you really do need to eat three times a day in order to get all of those nutrients. In fact, let me just tell you a couple of studies. I would like to share a little real information with you. Um, we found that people who eat breakfast are about 13% healthier throughout the day than those who don't. And people who don't eat breakfast um, eat 6.8% more food throughout the day. How interesting is that? That means if you're trying to diet, you're trying to lose some weight, you'll eat less, eat breakfast, and you'll eat less. 6.8% could be a lot of calories. Also, breakfast versus brunch. I struggle with this because sometimes I just want to shove them together and just have brunch. Of course, we all do it once in a while, but this study said is from the University of Barcelona in Spain, and it found that eating meals later on weekends than during the week, you know, like say, for example, you wake up on Saturday and have 11 o'clock breakfast, may cause weight gain because your body's metabolic rhythms suffer from small disruptions to normal eating schedules. I have really seen that to be true. So if you can make a plan and you can kind of stick with that plan, really can be helpful. Don't forget about simple little things like starting your morning with a glass of water that has the juice of a freshly squeezed lemon, or you can use the organic lemon juice like this, um, the volcano, mine's kind of collapsed, so I've been squeezing it a lot, but that's volcano lemon juice doesn't have any sulfites in it. And if you get, if you have trouble with your adrenals, you're really having trouble with energy, put a pinch of good salt, like the, the type of salt, the Himalayan sea salt or the real salt. Do that first thing in the morning. Now the salt helps your adrenals, so does the lemon juice, but it also helps your liver to dump bile. And that, that will cause you to go to the bathroom. It's a great detox. It also helps to speed up your metabolism. So cheap, so easy. Anybody can do that. And even if you only do it, you know, three or four days out of the week, it can make a huge difference. It's the one little thing you can do. But today we're going to make some real food for real breakfasts. And I'm, I'm excited to show you some of my favorite things that maybe you haven't ever done before. So I'm going to take a sweet potato. And I'm going to grate it on my trusty grater. In fact, I think this is one of the graters that somebody in this class got for me. I told people how often and how much I use my graters. And boy, in one class, people brought me in three. And I was so excited because I leave one here. I have a couple at home. I keep one in my class bag. And 
But the reason I'm using sweet potatoes instead of regular potatoes is less calories, more nutrition. Could you use regular potatoes? Of course. You can use regular potatoes. You could use zucchini. You could use yellow squash. I mean, there's lots of choices. What I did is I sprayed my muffin tin with some avocado oil, and I want to be sure it's sprayed really good, especially tonight, because I'm going to have to pull it out when they're hot. They, um, they usually come out really easy, but I want to be sure they can when they're hot. And I'm just going to make a little nest. I call these colorful egg baskets. I'll make a couple here, and you can... The sweet potatoes, I mean, you, you can tell we only used about a half of a cup for two big egg baskets. So we're going to get these in here and just kind of punch them down. They don't, they make a really nice, I always want to come up so you can actually see it, but you see how they make just a really cute little nest? And then you can put inside them anything you want. What I'm going to put today is I'm going to take a couple of my eggs, these are from my chickens, so, so um, Chris is going to actually get a real live chicken egg that probably was just, I either got it yesterday or today. Um, I'm going to put a splash of almond milk in there. Remember, I don't use dairy, so we're just going to give it a little splash of almond milk. And I'm going to put some things in here to vegetize. You know me and my vegetize. So I have some finely chopped power greens, which have spinach and mizuna and kale. And I've got some peppers and I've got some onions. So we're just going to go ahead and add a good dose of flavor with that. I'm going to put in a little bit of spike because that always makes everything taste better. And a little bit of garlic. Because we just we want, a, we want a little flavor in there. Now, I'm going to just, oops, I'm just going to whisk it. And it looks like it's hardly anything, but probably I got a pretty, probably close to half a cup of veggies in there. And then I know a lot of people, they miss a little bit of cheese. So I've been showing you the Simple Truth is a good brand. It's pretty new to Kroger. And it's really simple ingredients. And you know how I love simple ingredients. It only has a few ingredients. It makes it a lot better product. But it's non-dairy cheddar style shreds. I don't like love them, love them. They're not like cheese. I'm a cheese lover, but they give the flavor of cheese and things, especially if they melt in it. So I'm going to add just a little bit of this on the top when we put it in our little nest. So let's take a spoon. I'm just going to spoon these into our little nest. And that one egg made two. You can keep that in the back of your mind because you can make a whole bunch of these at once and freeze them. I'm going to show you what they look like. But I'm just going to take a pinch. It's hardly going to add any calories, but it's going to add a little bit of extra flavor. And I'm just going to put maybe a, I got probably about a teaspoon on there. See, I've got these really cute little eggs in the basket, little colorful eggs in the basket. And I'm going to put them in the oven and we'll have them ready in no time at all. I wanted to show you, I did bring some um, that I froze because I wanted you to be able to see that they look really nice and they keep well and you can make them these nice little frozen ready to go so you don't have time, you're starving, you need to run out the door, grab them, you can reheat them easily. And I usually put two because that means Dan and I each get one. Um, a lot of times, if I'm going to keep them for a long time, I just made these uh, for this class to show you. But I put them in a double. Like I'll put one in an individual little Ziploc, the other in an individual Ziploc, try and get most of the air out so they don't get freezer burned, and then stick them inside of another bag to make sure they freeze nicely. But these are super easy. And you know when you're trying to make something for someone that's maybe going through treatment or just not feeling that great, it's a really, really good thing that you can make. And you can take them like, you know, six or eight or whatever and eat them for a couple days and then tell them, hey, you can freeze these super easily and just throw them in the freezer. But they take no time at all to make and they're delicious. 
And you can put anything in there you want. You don't like spinach, you don't like power greens, okay, you could add something else to it. So don't worry about what you put in. You don't like onion, you know, you put in garlic. You don't like garlic, put in leeks. If you don't, anything, anything can go in there. You can make them as mild and gentle or spicy and, you know, flavorful, whatever way you like it. Another thing that I really like for breakfast, and I did this a lot for my boys, because they needed a hearty breakfast. And I don't know how many of you have had teenagers, but getting them to eat in the morning can be a pain in the neck, and especially getting them to eat something good. So what I started doing was making breakfast burritos. Now, I'm not gonna make these the same way you might think of breakfast burritos. I'm gonna do them a little differently. Now, normally I use everything gluten-free, but I was at Kroger and they didn't have their gluten-free, um, good kind of uh, tortillas they were out of. They just had ones made with white rice, so I wouldn't buy those. But I did buy these Extreme Wellness, 100% whole wheat. They're lower in carbs. They don't have any, any nothing added to them. They're, they're very simple and very good quality. But if you can't do wheat, you can always do the gluten-free brown rice version, which are excellent, but like I said, they were just out of them. So tortillas are really nice and easy to work with. And again, this is something you can freeze ahead. These are 70 calories for a whole tortilla, which I love because so many times when you're adding a bunch of, you know, a flour tortilla, you're adding a ton of extra calories. But what I'm gonna do is, you guessed it, we're gonna vegetize this burrito and maybe kind of an unusual way that you wouldn't always think of. I like to get some beans in, and you know I'm always trying to get y'all to get some beans in every day. It doesn't have to be a lot, but if you can get some, it can make a big difference with soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. So I'm just gonna add a spoonful. We're just making these for Carissa so she can have a good veggie burrito. And then in my, my little container here, I have some pepper, some onion, some rice cauliflower. Instead of brown rice, I use cauliflower rice all the time. And what is that? That is just finely diced cauliflower. You can buy it already rice. You can make it yourself. And I've got cabbage and I've got onions. So we're really vegetizing this. Remember what I've told you over and over. Let me put the whole thing in here. It looks like Chris is hungry tonight, so we're going to give her a whole bunch. Um, I'm also going to add just a squirt of lemon juice. We don't need a lot, just a little squirt, but it kind of adds just a little bit of um, pop to it. And to make this a complete protein, what I'm going to do is little, use a little bit of nut butter. And I was thinking, I know I put that in the recipe. Where is it? But it's there. This is the coolest thing that I found. Now, you may not be able to find this, and it doesn't matter. You can use any kind of nut butter you want. But this is garlic tahini. So it's sesame butter with garlic added to it. What do you need when you make hummus? Garlic and tahini. It's all there together. But the best part was, see that price, $1.45? You know me and my woohoo stickers. I found this at Kroger. I don't even know if, they, if every Kroger carries it. But when we take and mix seeds with beans, what do we get? A complete protein. So it's going to complete the protein and make it even better for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, this is almost like pourable, I'm just going to add just a little drizzle. It also has a lot of really nice flavor. I've just been so tickled with this because I can put it on a lot of things. And it's going to make a different type of burrito. Do you notice I'm not doing this Mexican. I'm doing it different. I'm doing it veggie vibe. Remember cabbage is a fabulous way to fight cancer. It's in that cruciferous family. We've got peppers and onions that are going to add flavor. That little pop of lemon or lime juice is going to add flavor. But mostly, what have we got? We have a lot of vegetables. So we're going to let this just simmer. I'll add just a little bit. This is another type of cheese that's available. Again, burritos, you think of cheese, but this one is the Daya cheddar style shreds. Add just a little to give it a little cheesy. We don't have to have that flavor in everything, but I think a lot of times people kind of expect that in burritos and I'll add a little spike. But we're just going to let this just kind of simmer around here as um, we go through. But I try to think of some different things. Now, could you make a more of a regular burrito? 
Of course you could. You can make it Mexican flavored. You could add salsa to it. You could add tomatoes. A lot of people avoid tomatoes. So is there another way to do something like this without doing that? Yeah, there is. And guess what? There's no eggs in here. For those of you that are trying to get away from eating so many eggs, but it's a great source of protein. And again, it's super easy to freeze. So what I would do, you're going to see this is going to be a pretty big burrito. A lot of times a whole burrito would be too much, especially for me. Now maybe for the boys or for Dan it'd be enough, but I like to cut them in half, wrap them. And again, they're so easy to reheat. You can pop them in the oven. Sometimes I use um, the microwave for reheating. It doesn't take long at all to make. It all depends on how soft you want your cabbage. I kind of like to have my cabbage a little crunchy, but it's up to you. You can do it any way you want. So if you like yours to be a little softer, you can just cook it, you know, till it's till a little softer. We're just going to let it simmer a little because I like the flavors to simmer all together. But when you have cabbage and you have cauliflower and you have the bright red peppers, you've started your day with more than a serving of veggies. So remember, you need seven a day, seven servings a day. And if you start with breakfast and you've got an extra serving, it's going to be that much easier for you to meet that goal. I'm going to add a little spike and a little pepper. Again, some people love hot sauce. We could, you know, add a little hot sauce to this. You can just do all kinds of different things. Just in case somebody's watching for the first time, I know you guys get sick and tired of me saying this, but spike's my favorite seasoning. I lost the lid. I'm gonna have to buy a whole nother container this size, but I buy it in bulk. It's 42 herbs and spices. And it's just loaded with flavor. And it's like a seasoned salt that just adds a lot of flavor. And you know what, it's so funny. I've had a, at least a couple from this class and a couple from some of my other classes call me and say, Jody, where can I get spike? I need to get it again. I'm making this special thing and it just doesn't taste right if it doesn't have spike. And that's always my line. Just doesn't taste right if it doesn't have spike. So I've been really tickled that people have found kind of the same thing that I have. They just really, really love having spike and having that extra flavor profile. You know, one of the things that people think is they think if you're going to eat well and you're going to eat for cancer to try to protect yourself, whether you're a survivor or you're in treatment or you're just preventing cancer, it has to taste crummy. And I know that you can't taste this. I wish you could smell it. It smells really good. But I want you to know that when we get back together, when COVID finally allows us to come um, back together and you can taste this, you'll believe me, it can taste good. Krista will tell you. I like that people like to like to come in and film these classes because then they get to eat and uh, taste some of these things. But really, every month I look for different ways to highlight and utilize some of these wonderful foods that are so protective and healthy and delicious. I'm just going to scrape all this in here out of my pan. You know, if I turn the burner off, it's trying to burn me. And I'm going to take just a little bit of this diet cheese. Again, it's not my absolute total favorite, but if you don't overdo it and you just use a little sprinkle of it, it still gives it just that cheesy flavor that kind of makes it extra, extra special. And then if we, I always put so much in here that it's hard to fold it. We're going to do it. We're going to fold it up. I actually had somebody that worked at Taco Bell show me one time how to do it. It wasn't that easy. I think they have to have a special skill, especially if you make them really full. But if you fold your burrito better than I just did, we get it all in there, and we get these little ends tucked in, and then we can turn around and cut it. Where did my knife go? Here we go. I like to cut it on a, on a diagonal. You can just wrap up, if you need to, the extra piece and throw it in the freezer. And if you want to be really cool, you can, I got a little spinach over here, we can just top it with a little bit. Maybe a piece of red pepper here. And we have this beautiful burrito loaded with protein. Think of how many categories we covered with that. We got nuts or seeds. We got veggies. We got whole grain, we got good fats, all of that in one breakfast. And again, it's going to fill you up. It's going to make you 
um, give you what you need for a busy day. Especially my folks that go out and ride or they're on their elliptical or they're going to go exercise and really you know, push through some calories. That is a great breakfast for them to start with. I love, love, love waffles and pancakes. They are one of my favorites. How about you? I just really enjoy, especially on the weekends, having something special. But you know, waffles and pancakes can be loaded with lots of calories, lots of empty calories, depending on how you make them. And they can end up kind of blowing your whole diet. But what about if we can make a really good waffle that was loaded with protein and super good? We can. And I'm going to make a high protein waffle today. So I'm going to take the Namaste flour. This is one of my favorites because it's one to one. Remember what that means. It means one cup equals one cup of any kind of flour like white flour, whole wheat flour. So if you have a recipe you like, you know you can use one cup of namaste to one cup of regular flour. It's um, this is perfect flour blend, and it mainly has brown rice as its, as its fat and foundation. So I'm just gonna use a little bit, I'm gonna just make probably one, might make two waffles, but just a little bit of waffle for Krista here. So I use a little less than a half a cup just to make one. You can use any kind you want. I've got a little salt in there, a little baking powder. Remember, if you're baking powder, you use rum curd, aluminum free. Um, we're going to add a little protein powder. Now, this is a crazy thing because you think protein powder and waffle, but rather than just having carbs, let's balance the protein. I have lots of different protein powders with me today. This one is just a plain old pea protein. That's all it has in it is pea protein. It is actually 15 grams per scoop. You only need to have 10 grams of protein for breakfast. That's what I try to have everybody have. So I'm going to put a whole scoop because we're only going to make a waffle. If you were making them ahead, and by the way, they freeze great, you can do that. But I'm going to put just a little half a scoop because that's still going to give us seven. And I'm going to put an egg in there, and that gives us eight. So this is going to be a super, super high protein waffle. And that's what we want to start our day with. You've been asleep all night long. Your body has had no nutrition. So we want to be sure that we get what we need. So I've got another one of my really good eggs. And remember that eggs are a perfect protein. They have all of the aminos that you need. They're in a really nice balance, the way they work together. And it's really valuable. Um, I'm also going to vegetize because you know it's my favorite word. And what I love to do, and to, whoops, a little, little pumpkin on the outside, I'm going to add pumpkin. You could add lots of things. You can add shredded zucchini, whatever. I have this awesome organic pumpkin that's loaded with beta carotene and antioxidants. Pumpkin's one of those things when you can it, it actually um, uh, has more nutrient value. But you know, what do you make with pumpkin other than pumpkin pie? I make pumpkin waffles, and they're absolutely delicious because they add some flavor. You know, they're really good. And I'm gonna put a little bit of almond milk. It just so happens that both of my milks today happen to be almond, but this is unsweetened almond milk. I buy it either in the dairy case or I buy it aseptically like those little cartons. And I'm adding a little bit of almond milk. I'm going to add um, just a little bit of vanilla. You use vanilla or almond extract, whichever you like. And I think, did I put a couple drops of stevia in here? You can put a couple drops of stevia if you want. Since I use pumpkin, I think I might put a couple drops just because I didn't use applesauce or, you know, a fruit. So I'll put a couple drops of stevia. I'm just going to mix this up. And I have this old, I don't even know if you can see it. Let's see if I can hold it up here. Give me a second to mix this up. And I um, started giving waffle makers a lot for wedding gifts because... They're really cool, and most people, you know, somewhere in their house, they can find a waffle maker that's in a cupboard, you know, stuck somewhere. But I've inherited my mother-in-law's waffle maker, and it's an oldie goldie, but I love it. You know, I often like the older kinds better. But I uh, tell everybody that if you can just know how easy it is to make waffles, it can take, a, you know, especially a weekend breakfast, or maybe it's just a weekday breakfast. You see how pretty orange my batter is? I'm going to keep it a little thicker than I would a pancake. Okay, we want it a little thicker. I think because I have, um, 
I have pumpkin in here. I should add just a, a shake of cinnamon. What do you think? Give it a little cinnamon. One of the things about cinnamon too, by the way, if you use that in any of your breakfast foods, is cinnamon cuts your desire for sweet. It cuts your desire for sugar. So, and it also makes everything taste sweeter. So we'll put a little cinnamon in here, a little shake. And we've got our batter ready. I'm going to thin it just a little bit. I'm going to show you what I would consider to be the right texture for um, waffle batter. Everybody's a little different, but in my boat, I want this to be thicker than pancake batter, but not too thick. The other was just a little bit too thick, and it won't get done as nicely. So let me just stir a little bit more almond milk in here, and we'll see what I mean. You see how this, can you tell that it's it's gloppy, but it's not super thick? Now my oldie goldie waffle maker, let's see if I can hold it up here because it's kind of hot, looks like this. I've got it over here kind of in the corner. Just a little mix, one waffle at a time. I don't have anything super fancy, but you know you can make a waffle throw it in the oven and it'll stay just fine. I did spray it, um, and I try to be sure that I keep it pretty well sprayed because the worst thing is when you can't you get it on there and it won't come off. This actually looks like it'll make a two or three waffles with what I made, but I'm going to put a couple spoonfuls in here and get it going. And while it's going, let's talk about what can you put on a waffle. Everybody thinks of that gross log cabin syrup. That stuff is pure junk sugar. But if you want a sweet waffle, and sometimes we love to have sweet things, it was so funny because Dan came in out of the garage and he was cleaning a bunch of stuff up and I keep a lot of things in this big pantry section I have in my, my garage. He says, I found sorghum! And he was so excited because he loves sorghum. Well, since his treatment, he has a tendency to run a little bit anemic. So I was really grateful that he loves sorghum. Sorghum and molasses. I didn't bring the sorghum because actually Dan has a stash somewhere. I would have showed it to you. That looks a lot like molasses. It's just made from sorghum rather than being made from sugar cane. But this is grandma's molasses. And one of the things people don't know about molasses is it's loaded with iron. It also is loaded with magnesium. I can actually take molasses and get baby's iron levels up because it's so hard to give young children and, and babies and, and us iron because it's really hard on your stomach and it makes you constipated and a lot of times you know it's just a, it's just really hard on your body but molasses isn't and so my boys learned to love molasses drizzled over their waffles it was one of their favorite favorite things it's strong it's rich flavored but for some reason they loved it also um, for years and years they made maple syrup in a maple syrup shack and a friend of ours who has loads of maple trees and i don't know if you know this but it takes 40 gallons of water, they call it water, it's the sap that comes out of the tree, to make one gallon of syrup. It is sweet, and it is still sugar, and your body still utilizes it as sugar. But when you know how much it takes to make maple syrup, I put in the little itsy bitsy pitcher on the table and they can only do dots, and you can do a few light, nice little dots of maple syrup on your, on your um, pancake. You can put uh, better butter on there, and I forgot my better butter. Golly, my head was just must have been in a different place. Everything that was in the fridge uh, in a different bag didn't get brought. But better butter, I taught you how to make that. Two cups of oil to a pound of organic butter. Whip it till it's light and fluffy. Makes a wonderful, wonderful um, spread. And then a few dots of maple syrup, molasses, or what about good old honey? You know, the guy across the street from us has wonderful bees, and his bees come in to our corn. So they pollinate our organic corn, and they come into our alfalfa, the, the hay that we raise, and it's so cool because I can use the honey that's right from my area, and if I'm gonna have allergies, it's gonna be to the things in my area, and the honey will help to make those allergies less of a problem. So every year, I just look so forward to getting wonderful fresh honey. So let's take our waffle that's smelling really nice and done. We can just pop this out of here. Look at this beautiful waffle. Are you getting excited? <laughs> we 
you've got a wonderful waffle that also is vegetized. I could put even a little bit more. I think I'll make another one and I'll put a little bit more on there because it didn't go all the way out to the edges. You can get really good at determining how much it takes to make a perfectly round waffle, but that is great. The other thing about waffles, and now this one is a little safe, a little bit sweet because we put a little cinnamon in there, a little bit of stevia and pumpkin. But if I make plain waffles, one of the things I try to do is make extra. And I love to put veggies over waffles. It's just a base for some really good things. You know, you can do beans over waffles. Um, my mom used to always do chicken over waffles. And I think a couple of restaurants have that. So sometimes I'll take some organic chicken and, and do something like that. But you can do great veggies over waffles too. So waffles can be a really quick and easy thing that you can make, especially on weekends. Oh, now this time I put in a lot and it's coming out the edges. So you have to just experiment and each different um, mixture of waffle mixture will come out differently. But think about how many different ways you could make waffles. One of the things I love to do to stick in, I didn't do it this time, but hemp seed hearts. You can put chia seeds. They're really good in waffles. We're going to put um, some of that in our smoothie. So I'll save it for the smoothie. But you can do that also in waffles or pancakes. And again, I don't know about you, but there's just something that's a little extra special about having a waffle over a pancake. So pancakes are delicious too. Same recipes for both. One a little thicker, one a little thinner. That's the only difference. You can do them either way. Another thing that people love, love, love for breakfast is cereal. So I got some different cereals to show you and to see what we can do with these. This particular granola, you know, one of the biggest things about cereals is read what a serving size is because, boy, it'll kill you sometimes. This is a third of a cup of cereal for 150 calories and 7 grams of fat and 18 grams of carbohydrate and 5 grams of sugar. So you know what I would think about this? I would like to use this as a topping on fruit or use a little bit of it because a third of a cup, that's not very much at all. It'd be nice if we could get a little more bang for the buck. So what if we did that along with something like Brown Rice Krispies? Because Brown Rice Krispies are 160 calories for one and a third cups. Now that's a bowl of cereal if you can at least get a cup. But what if we took, brown rice krispies are kind of plain, you know, they're just brown rice that have been puffed, but what if we added a little bit of the granola to it, okay? And did it sort of a little differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this brown rice crispy, you know, we're not gonna do a ton, but I probably make this a couple of servings. I make it for Dan and I and then spoon it out. I also found, I was at the grocery, so I was looking for um, cereals at the grocery store that were decent. So this one, um, it has 250 calories per half a cup, which is a little bit better. No, it's worse than the other one, but it's loaded with blueberries and it's really, really good. So again, what if we did sprinkles to add the flavor instead of like a whole half a cup? So we could do either the blueberry vanilla or we could use a coconut cashew sort of as the sprinkles to add some sweetener. I'm gonna pop this waffle out because it's done and there we've got a couple of really delicious waffles on there so there's lots of different yogurts that are available that are non-dairy and people love yogurt and a lot of times people really enjoy yogurt on their um on their uh cereal instead of just plain old milk so this one is chobani and again, I'm always looking for what's on sale. I'm such a sucker for doing stuff on sale. This one was 49 cents, this one was 59 cents. I don't know if you have brought, bought yogurt, but it lasts forever. It just, it, you could keep it in your fridge for a month and it'd still be good. So I like to get stuff like this. This is just a vanilla Chobani. This is a blueberry almond yogurt. And I got a coconut milk yogurt that's made with raspberry. So we have, uh, coconut, almond, and what's Chobani made out of? I think it might be oat milk. Let me just double check. It is coconut, tapioca, chicory root fiber. So each one just a little bit different recipe, but all yogurts. 
So you could take, uh, we're going to do blueberry in our um, cereal. So maybe we'll take a little bit of this almond blueberry yogurt. And what I'm going to do with it is I am going to mix a little bit of protein with it. Because again, the problem with cereal is it's so low in protein. It's just carbs. And we need to boost that protein. So I'm going to take, um, I think I'm going to use this one. This is a really cool collagen protein. It's really light and it stirs into things super easy. Collagen is um, a, a protein that can help a lot of people with arthritis, high in protein, but it takes a lot less. This one is actually uh, nine grams of protein per a scoop. Now you think, well, that's a lot, but see, this scoop is a lot smaller. See this little scoop? And we've still got some protein in the yogurt, but I'm gonna go ahead and stir just a scoop of the collagen protein. Here's the vanilla, and so it's gonna go nicely with my flavor. Now I'm not gonna vegetize this one, but I'm gonna fruitify this one. So they have some really good organic blueberries, and unfortunately, a lot of the fruit, we wanna be careful and make sure that we get some of our fruit organic, but I got some really nice organic blueberries. So I put, remember I put a little bit of the, um, of the cereal on the bottom, then I put some blueberries, then I'm gonna spoon just a little bit of yogurt on here. I'm gonna kind of do this in layers. Then I'm gonna take a little bit, since I have all these, you might not have all this at home and you might not do it so fancy, but I'm gonna put a little bit of the granola. Again, we're just doing sprinkles. And this is really gonna taste good when it's all said and done. Then I'm going to add, I just love doing these chia and hemp hearts and sunflower seeds. So I'm just gonna do, the bottom's coming out of that, so I have to slam it down there. I'll put a few sunflower seeds. These are raw sunflower seeds. I'm just going to make a few layers of this. So I'm going to put a little bit more of our, our brown rice in here. We're going to call this a cereal sundae or something. And again, this could make multiple servings. It wouldn't just have to be one serving. Put a little bit of our yogurt on the top. A few blueberries. Just a couple. And then I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put a few hemp seed hearts on here. Some of you have never had hemp seed. It's got a really nice flavor to it. These are finer. I have two different kinds. Some are crunchy and more, you know, have a little pop to them, and some are finer. And then I'm going to put a little bit of coconut cashew just because I have it. Might as well, right? We've got it. Again, we're just going to sprinkle. We're not going to use much. We're not going to get any of those huge calorie numbers on here. Then I'm going to put the last of our yogurt, because we might as well use the whole container. Kind of silly not to use it. We're going to put the last of our couple little blueberries. And I think I'll sprinkle just a little bit. I think I'll put a few more sunflower seeds. We're going to use chia in our, in, our, um, in our smoothie. So we have this really delicious, I don't know if you can see all the layers through there, but instead of just plain old cereal, we made this sundae. We made something that's gonna have a lot more flavor. It's gonna be power packed. It's gonna be sweet and delicious. Wonderful blueberries for antioxidants and value. We've got a little bit of the sweet cereal, the brown rice crispies to give it some, you know, fullness and pop and, and crunch and as you eat it. And then the almond milk yogurt instead of the cow's milk yogurt, because so many people are sensitive to cow's milk and the almond milk yogurt probably has more nutritional value. And we took what would just be cereal, and in a, just extra couple little pops to it, we took added the nuts and seeds, extra protein, the protein powder to the yogurt, really made it pop with protein, and that's a whole meal. You know, you're really getting a bang for your buck in that. And let me peek at our eggs to see how they're doing. Oh, they're ready to go. They are ready to come out. And we will let them rest for just a minute. I'll take them out here and put them on our, can you see how beautiful they are? A little egg in a basket. And we're gonna make a smoothie. 
because you know that I'm a smoothie girl and I love smoothies and I love all different kinds of smoothies. You can make them a hundred different ways. And I happen to know that Miss Carissa does not like bananas. So instead of bringing uh, bananas, which are in her recipe, I brought peaches, because if I remember correctly, peaches, kiwi, and blueberries. So I thought we could do something a little different. You, this is, you can do it any way you want. I love bananas and smoothies because they make them rich and thick. But we're going to put a little chia in here, and that will also make it rich and thick. But if you don't like bananas, then don't do bananas. I call this a spring fling breakfast shake. And it, start, it calls for a frozen banana. This makes a pretty good amount. A lot of times what I will do is I'll do it and then I'll put some in the fridge and have it later, like have some maybe at 7 o'clock in the morning. Then by 10.30 I may have another few tastes of it. But we're going to do, um, it says start, start with berries. So I've got some wonderful, I got those, those uh, organic blueberries. You like blueberries? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, we're going to put in a few blueberries. And instead of our banana, we're going to put in some peaches, which you like, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. I thought I remember that. We'll save the kiwi for another time because I don't want to do too many fruits. If we do too many fruits, that's a problem. Then we're going to take our almond milk. You're good with almond milk? Okay, we'll put a little almond milk in here. And then again, we're going to do a protein because we've got to build this up with protein. So we could do, I have a, this is actually a medical food. This is one that I use almost every day, which is the Ultra Meal Cardio 360 because it's, it helps to bring down my cholesterol, which can run too high. It's something about getting old. It can help me with metabolism, which another getting old thing. It seems like the older I get, the worse my metabolism is. So it really helps my metabolism. And it's loaded with nutrients. But you don't have to have something, uh, medical food, something expensive like this. You can do any of my protein powders. One that's really good in protein shakes, again, is the collagen protein. So let's put, is it okay to put a scoop of that in? We're going to do that, and I've got my little scoop. See, it's such a little scoop, it doesn't take much to get those 15 grams of protein in there. So we're going to put that in, and we want to vegify it. So I have here a little kale, a little spinach. We're going to put some spinach and kale in here. Not too much. I don't want to gross her out. But there's probably, you know, I probably just put it close to a cup. And greens, chia seed we're going to add. And I think that's all. Oh no, I love to brighten it just a tiny bit with just a little squirt of lemon juice. It just seems like it makes it taste so much brighter. And we've got chia seeds. I've got my chia in bulk all the time. I've got some bulk ones around here somewhere that I'm not seeing. Oh, here they are. I um, get them oftentimes if you're up in the uh, Chipshawana area. They'll often have bulk for really good price. And so that's where I happen to get these because I buy. Uh, I use, like to use chia a lot really helps your bowels and it's a nice soluble fiber it's also loaded loaded with protein i was gonna tell you these are some that they have right here at the cancer support community in the cupboard 80 calories per tablespoon and they have um of course there were sugars two grams of protein so add some extra protein with all that and we're going to just give her a whiz. <laughs> blender. Sometimes, if it, depending on how hard of a substance it is, it won't break it down quite as much, but um, you can use just a regular blender. Let me grab a, one, a nice big glass, and we have a super duper Smoothie. Now I didn't make a super huge one, but even even when you try to make a little one, it always seems like it's more than you can. See, I have a little left over, so we'll put the rest of that. Like I said, I would have some, and then maybe have some later on during the day. Let's pop out our little eggs in a basket. Normally, I like to let them sit just a bit because it really helps them to pop out more easily. They're still good and hot. We'll just put those right next to our, our um, 
burrito or a breakfast burrito, again, they come out so much better if you can let them sit just a bit, a little bit left in the bottom of our, um, of our sweet potato. But isn't that, and aren't they just so cute and pretty? And you can see just serving those, you know, the kids sit down and go, wow, mom, you really cooked. <laughs> or your husband, you fixed me this much nice stuff for breakfast. But if you can imagine, now you wouldn't eat all the stuff for breakfast, obviously it's way too much. But whether you had a burrito, you had your eggs in a basket, you had a waffle, you had a little protein shake with it or separate, you had your cereal, you got all of your needs met in that breakfast. You are really giving your body what it needs to start the day. Just a few other things about why it's so important to eat breakfast. Let me just share with you. Think about your heart and your entire cardiovascular system. They depend on all the nutrients from three meals a day, not two meals or one meal. Three meals a day in order to work properly. With insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome, remember that's the fat in the belly that ugh, is so frustrating and so many of us have to face, especially if you, if you go through menopause and as you get older. They found that if you, um, and by the way, that's in epidemic proportions in America, that eating breakfast can help to reduce insulin resistance and metabolic disorder. So skipping meals doesn't help it, but eating something, the right kind of something, does help it. For people that are experiencing eating disorders, and eating disorders doesn't have to be anorexia, it can be, you know, all kinds of, I just don't feel like eating, and you know, your body turns off, and then you don't want to eat. This happens so much, and they, they call it, um, an eating disorder when it, with cancer patients because they just feel that way and they don't want to eat. So if we could do even just a protein shake, even getting that much in can really help get over that. Because the more you don't eat, the more you don't eat. You know, it's kind of self, self perpetuating. Helps your immune system work more efficiently. Helps you lose weight. People that eat breakfast lose more weight than people that don't. Which I have to tell myself that over and over because it's so easy to skip. It can help your focus, it can help your skin, your blood sugar stays so much more stable if you start first thing in the morning, not with a bunch of coffee or bullet coffee or you know something like that, but real food, your, your blood sugar will stay stable, your energy will stay stable, and you're gonna get the nutrients that you need. One other study, and this is really important, they found at the University of Columbia a low carb High fat breakfast like a cheese omelet or like our little eggs in a basket helps people to, to um, lose weight because it stops their blood sugar from spiking later. So what does a donut do? Spikes your blood sugar, right? It goes up and then crashes. You just, you're, you're in, got the highs and the lows. They also did this study of 5,000 kids from nine to 11. And they, this was at Cardiff University, and it showed that children are twice as likely, twice, two times more likely to score higher than average grades if they start with a healthy breakfast. Well, we may not be in school, but I'm telling you what, every day my brain has to take in new stuff. Every day I gotta learn new stuff. So if anything can help me to absorb more, to be able to be smarter and sharper and, and work less hard on maintaining everything, I'm all about it. And then for those of us that are older, a study from um, a scholar university, uh, put my glasses on so I can really read it, Osaka University of 82,000 men and women found that eating breakfast decreases the risk of having a stroke. The more days per week participants have breakfast, the lower their risk for having a stroke. Wow, that's pretty interesting, especially because heart disease and stroke are up there as the number one killer. You know, right now it's a little ahead of cancer. So we need to eat breakfast. We need to eat healthy breakfasts. We need to, I'm looking at my time, make sure we've got plenty of time for questions. We need variety in our breakfasts. So hopefully this will give you some ideas of some recipes that you can do. You saw, good grief, we fixed four breakfasts. One, two, three, five breakfasts in less than an hour. And you could do this, you know, five, 10 minutes every morning. Krista, do we have some questions? No questions. No questions today. That must mean I've just done either a fabulous job or you don't like any of it. So if you do have any questions, please be sure and send them in. I'm happy, happy, happy to answer any questions. And remember that every one of these recipes that I give you, everything that we do in these classes, you can make them yours. You can use what protein powder you have. 
You can use the flour that you have. Even making small changes yields really big results. So don't feel like if you don't have everything in a recipe that you have to go out and you know, buy a whole bunch of new stuff. You don't. Start with little changes. Maybe you got a couple extra lettuce leaves sitting around in the freezer from, you know, do it in the fridge from doing a salad the night before. Throw those in your smoothie. That vegetifies it. Or I use like the little stumps of carrot, you know, where I'll not need the whole carrot. Throw those in there. Do all kinds of wonderful things to improve your breakfast. And I will look forward to seeing everybody next month. So I'm, I'd be really excited if you'd send me any ideas you've come up with, any special things you do to make your breakfast healthier, or any ideas you got from some of what I shared. Look forward to seeing you next month for Cooking for Wellness.